Follow your- Hello and welcome to the program. Thanks for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. There's no denying whatsoever mind-body connection. The classic expression, trust your gut, that's one that we, we use a lot, but we don't always take it literally. But what do you do when your gut persistently causes discomfort? That's when you need to follow your gut instinct and get to the doctor. Well, our guest today is gastroenterologist Dr. Raj, and she's here to explain what's normal, what's a signal of something more serious, and when to uh, get checked out. Welcome to the program, Dr. Raj. How are you? Thank you. I'm well. Glad to be here. Now, you're you're a gastroenterologist. Um, A bit of background about yourself briefly for our listeners. Absolutely. So I'm a gastroenterologist practicing here in New York City, um, I'm also medical editor for Health Magazine, and I talk a lot in the media about health topics and, and gut health in particular. And, and a lot of uh, outlets, a lot of folks may know, uh, Good Morning America, World News Tonight, uh, The Today Show, and many others, correct? That's right, yep. I appear frequently on a variety of different national TV shows, always loving to educate the public about living their healthiest, best life. Now, I mentioned that um, you know the mind-body-gut connection is, is a no-brainer. Why is it important to literally go with your gut and listen to what your body might be telling you? Yeah, well, you know, I think anyone who's experienced butterflies in their stomach has experienced that mind-gut connection. The fact that we often can feel our stress or anxiety or even excitement in our gut, literally. Um, but when we're talking about trusting your gut, what I, what I mean is really listening to your body and the signals it's giving you that something might be off. And when it comes to your digestion, it's very important to pay attention to any kind of unusual symptoms or persistent symptoms because they could be a sign of a more serious underlying condition. So, you know, we all, all from time to time will have an occasional stomach upset. Maybe we ate something that was off or too rich or we traveled somewhere and had some changes in our bowel movements for a day or two, that's, you know, relatively normal. But if things are persistent, if they're going on for longer or if they are recurrent and if they're affecting your day-to-day life, this is a reason why you really do want to talk to a doctor because these symptoms could be a sign of something more serious and also are, are confusing because Things like diarrhea, abdominal pain, that that could be a sign of many different GI conditions, something like Crohn's or irritable bowel syndrome. But it also could be a sign of EPI, which is a condition that not a lot of people are aware of. What is EPI? So EPI stands for exocrine pancreatic insufficiency. And this is a condition where your pancreas is not producing enough enzymes to digest your food and break down the nutrients. And this can then lead to symptoms like diarrhea, bloating, abdominal pain, unexplained weight loss. Because you're not digesting fat, you might actually see fat droplets floating in the toilet water or the bowel movements themselves might float. Um, These are some of the symptoms and clues that you might be suffering from EPI. Other than the persistence of a symptom, when should a person say, hey, I'm going to the doctor now because this just isn't right? Yeah, I think, um, well, the length of symptoms is important. Also, if you're finding yourself um, changing your lifestyle. So, you know, sometimes people, they won't travel because they're afraid they're going to have to run, look for a bathroom or they won't go out on a date or they won't go to that meeting. You know, if it's really affecting your day-to-day life, um, you want to seek medical attention. If you find that you are reaching for over-counter, over-the-counter medicines very often and kind of self-medicating without actually getting the right diagnosis, that's another reason, another time that you should be speaking to a, a doctor and specifically, you know, eventually getting to a gastro enterologist for something like this is a good idea because we have the most experience in diagnosing some of these more rare conditions. You know, we we see on television all of these over-the-counter remedies for this stomach-related issue, that Mm stomach-related issue. How often, in your experience, do some of these over-the-counter remedies exacerbate a problem simply because we think that it's something that um, is normal or maybe over-the-counter? can fix it when it's actually something that nothing's going to take care of except more in-depth testing and treatment from a gastroenterologist. Yeah, I think it's it's very common for people to first try over-the-counter remedies. And, you know, that's okay for a very short period of time. But as you said, if you do that for a long period of time, it really can adversely affect you and the condition because it's long a longer period of time that you're not getting the right diagnosis, not getting the right treatment, your condition could worsen, it could become more serious. 
Um, so you really want to go to that doctor sooner rather than later and stop trying to kind of figure it out on your own. As I said, in terms of gastrointestinal symptoms, it can be very confusing, and that's not something you should try to face or figure out on your own. Who's at risk of EPI? Is this something that can affect anyone at any age? Uh, are males more susceptible than females? Um, when should we start considering EPI as the problem? Yeah, well, it, it, it can affect anyone at any age, but it has been associated with certain conditions, things like chronic pancreatitis, which is an inflammation of your pancreas, cystic fibrosis. If you've had a procedure like a pancreatic surgery, these are some of the conditions that are associated with it, but it could really affect anyone. Okay, so it's not something that is a result of uh, another treatment for an, for an underlying or an additional uh, symptom. It could just pop out of nowhere, no matter what age you are, no matter what sex, right? That's right. That's correct. When, um, when you're dealing with some of these problems, say you have a teenager that's having bowel mm-hmm. movements three, four times a day, is that something that's um, abnormal for a teenager during gr- their growing years? And once you reach your 30s and 40s, should it be, you know, once a day, twice a day, or is there some ideal number for at least bowel movements? Well, you know, I, I stay away from generally ideal numbers because I think it's a very individual thing. And what I tell my patients is, you know, what, what has been the, the pattern for you and have you noticed a change in that pattern? So for some people, going three times a day might be normal for them and that's um, and that's fine because that's been going on for years. But if you used to go once a day and now all of a sudden you're going three times a day, or if those three times a day are uncomfortable or urgent or you know the stools are really loose or that kind of thing, you know that would be a sign that it's actually a cause for, con- cause for concern. So I think if there's any question in your mind at all, really don't hesitate to discuss all of these things with your doctor. You know, how frequently you're going, what does the stool look like, things that you might think are embarrassing or shouldn't be discussed, absolutely should be discussed. Because as we said, your gut and trusting your gut, these are clues to underlying conditions sometimes. So you really want to listen to them and discuss them. Where can we go and learn some more? So you can go to a website, identifyepi.com, and there's a great symptom checker there, and there's also a list of questions you can bring with you to the doctor. A lot of wonderful resources to learn more about this condition and GI symptoms. Dr. Raj, thank you so much for joining us on Health Professional Radio today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Great. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for listening to Health Professional Radio. We're very proud to be an independent broadcaster providing our content free of charge to you, the listener. One of the ways that we're able to remain free and independent is by having people like you become patrons. You can support Health Professional Radio simply by visiting hpr.fm and clicking the button that says become a patron. Your patronage of even just $1 a month lets us know that you're there, which in turn makes us more valuable to advertisers. And, of course, if you're able to afford more, then we would certainly appreciate the support. My name is Toby Longhurst from Health Professional Radio. Please visit hpr.fm, click the become a patron button, and support us if you can.